Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that was played uh, in the 14th Terpolis tournament of 1980. It was played in Tilburg in Netherlands and uh, it's a game between uh, current world champion at that time Anatoly Karpov uh, versus former world champion Boris Paski. It was uh, quite the game and a lot of you have been asking me in the comments what is happening with Karpov as there were, well there's just a new headline every day that Karpov is in a coma. There are some conflicting uh, uh, information uh, 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 regarding uh, all of this, uh, I've read that his daughter Sophia said that he's recovering in a hospital, that he's in an induced coma. Then there are some other, uh, uh, well, sources saying that he, his wife Natalia is saying that he's actually at home recovering. Um, th there's just not a lot to be found on the subject. So, you know, the world's a big place. If you have any uh, insight on this, do share. Uh, like I said, supposedly he's uh, in, in a hospital in Moscow uh, just recovering from uh, trauma caused by a head injury. Now, if I know more, I will inform you guys, uh, but I didn't just want to share the news. I also thought it'd be nice to show a nice game by the by the former world champion. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, faces a very, very uh, interesting player, Boris, uh, Boris Paski, and uh, Karpov opens with pawn to e4. We have c5. Spassky goes for the Sicilian defense. Knight to f3. We have d6 and d4. So the open Sicilian, nothing uh, out of the ordinary here. Captures, captures, knight f6, knight to c3, and now e6, the savening variation. Uh, where bishop to e2 is uh, by far the most popular move nowadays, but Karpov goes for pawn to g4. This is the Keres attack, uh, and it is, uh, well, even the, the, today is the second most popular continuation. You want to ad advance the pawn to g5. So Spassky stops this and pawn to h4. Uh, you really want to push that pawn to g5. Knight to c6, now putting pressure on the d4 knight, and rook to g1. Uh, we have pawn to d5. Uh, best way to counter a flank attack is the uh, is the counter attack in the center. We often say, and now you could capture, but Karpov goes bishop to b5. So you can see that he is very very rapidly de uh, developing his pieces. Now, interestingly, uh, both uh, Karpov and uh, well, and Spassky and Tal, amongst others, played in this tournament. But it's like Karpov played like Tal in this tournament, and Tal played like Karpov in this tournament. Uh, uh, you, you'll you'll see what I mean by this. Uh, so bishop b5, we have bishop to d7 by Spassky, e captures on d5, knight captures, and now knight captures on d5, e captures on d5, and now bishop to e3. So just nicely developing pieces. And notice the h4 pawn is always hanging, but it's just never a good time to capture it. Here, if you go for queen captures on h4, uh, you've uh, grabbed the pawn, but you allow for some very nice development. Queen to d3, and now white will castle queen side, and you don't really want to... Uh, do something like this. So instead, bishop to e3, we have bishop to e7. Now Spassky will capture the pawn with with the bishop, and Karpov just plays queen to d2, saying, okay, you are, you are welcome to capture on h4. Now the real question is, what should Spassky do here? Does he castle? Does he capture? Does he play a6? Does he does he capture the, the knight maybe on d4? Uh, what's, uh, what happens after castles is actually extremely interesting. Here you would see something like knight captures on c6, bishop captures, bishop captures, pawn captures, and now a queenside castles from Karpov. So this does leave his queenside a bit vulnerable, uh, but even after uh, eliminating one of the attacking pawns, you, you will still face g5. So that's kind of the issue. You, you can defend this, but you have to uh, calculate everything uh, uh, super precisely. So if h captures, bishop captures, bishop captures, rook captures, uh, now you can play rook to g1, you can shift your rooks to the h file, but uh, let's say queen f6, and now if rook to g1, g6, and now if f4 with the idea of f5, you will play rook to e8. And if f5, then you're going to play rook to e5. This this is how you defend this position. Uh, not uh, not very comfortable, but you, you can play it. Uh, Spassky decides that uh, he doesn't want to castle just yet. He's going to grab the h4 pawn first, which is uh, at least an odd decision since you would capture it eventually, even uh, in, in that line that we've shown. But okay, Karpov castles queenside and now comes bishop to f6. You don't have time for something like queen e7 and castles because just bishop captures and now nothing is good. If you play b captures, then you're no longer castling queenside. And if you play bishop captures, then you lose control over the f5 square the queen hangs the bishop is attacked the the g7 pawn is attacked here you just resign 
uh, but after queenside castles, we have bishop to f6 by Spassky, and now it is uh, as of this moment in move 14 uh, that we have a completely new game, or this position has never been reached again. Uh, we have castles here. Uh, oh no, we don't have castles. Castles is one thing you could do, uh, but uh, sorry, not castles. Um, uh, knights to f5, preventing castles. Uh, the problem is if you castle now, then uh, Carpo would very happily eliminate your h6 pawn with check g captures and g5 just completely blast open the position if bishop e5 you can even play queen captures on d5 and now you have to worry about too many things for example if bishop e6 offering a queen trade queen e4 attacks the black queen and if queen a5 attacks the bishop attacks the a2 pawn just bishop d3 a threatening checkmate and there's just no good way to get uh, get out of this mess so instead after knight f5 spassky says all right bishop captures on f5 i have to do this g captures and now again castles is met with h6 because now karpov has the semi open g file so a6 and now karpov plays the very instructive bishop captures on c6 uh, b captures and now bishop to c5 which is just uh, awesome if you think about it because the bishop here was really putting a lot of pressure on black's king side but the bishop on c5 is putting even more pressure on on the black king now you have to think about what happens if rook to e1 check lands. So Spassky plays rook to b8. He shows that he's not worried about rook to e1. King to d7 is a perfectly fine square for the black king. For example, rook e1 check, king d7. And there's no good way to continue this attack. This pawn on f5 is even preventing you from further attacking the black king. So uh, Karpov does, uh, well, what Karpov does best, he just finds a move that uh, completely eliminates any and all counterplay for black. And that's usually... Uh, well in any position that will be the move and that is pawn to b4 now the rook is no longer uh, powerful on the b file as the bishop and rook were putting pressure on that b2 pawn the bishop no longer uh, serves all that much purpose uh, and uh, well you're still cutting off the king from uh, from escaping to the king side so this bishop is definitely Karpov's strongest piece for the moment and here Spassky ch should just continue with his plan king to d7 probably Spassky was waiting for rook to e1 check before he plays king to d7 sort of uh, stepping out of check with tempo uh, but uh, king to d7 is what you should play here and now after you uh, let's say c4 try to open up the position king c7 but I mean that's quite uh, quite a maneuver king to d7 to c7 not not many people would play this uh, probably who would play this with black is Anatoly Karpov himself he would find this but Spassky played rook to b5 and this just allows Karpov to uh, blast through the position with rook g to e1 check king to d7 and now we said that the king on d7 is perfectly fine so what's the problem now the problem is uh, Spassky put a rook on b5 and he put it there for a good reason he wanted to play a queen to b8 put even more pressure on the b5 play a5 open up the position but now pawn to c4 comes with tempo and now the rook is also hanging so you don't have time to just play king to c7 and probably not probably definitely Spassky saw all of this and he decided to sacrifice the exchange for the attack rook captures on c5 b captures and now look at this bishop to g5 sort of wins Karpov's queen but not really pawn to f4 and now queen to f6 going for queen to a1 check and uh, what do you make of this position uh, it's Karpov to move you have only one move that wins the game for you feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning move for Karpov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not touching that bishop. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is C captures on D5. This is the only move that wins the game. But uh, just for fun, I will show you what happens if you capture the bishop. It's actually a really, really complicated line uh, that goes with queen to A1 check, king C2, queen captures on C2. Now if you go to D3, queen captures on C4 will be deadly. So you have to go back and now queen A1 check, queen king to C2, queen to A4 check, king to c1 and now rook to b8 uh will be very very hard to parry for white you are up a pawn but still not much you can do here queen to c2 for example will be met with queen a3 check king to d2 now you will win the white queen and after you let's say c captures on d5 uh you will force a trade on b2 now of course the black queen cannot capture the, the black the white queen is pinned so queen captures on b2 queen captures king to e3 and now let's say queen to c3 with check goes after the pawn here 
the king f2, queen captures with check, king to g2, and now c captures on d5, leaves black with a passed a pawn, passed d pawn, pr probably a passed h pawn at some point. So uh, if anyone would be playing this for the win, it, it would be Spassky. So instead, Sp uh, Karpo plays c captures on d5, this is the only winning move, and now he has to survive the attack. Queen to a1 check, king c2, queen captures on a2 with check, king to d3, and now uh, any further checks will just be blocked with the white queen, queen b5 check, queen c4, and there are no more checks. So uh, Spassky decides to trade queens here, queen captures on d2, rook captures, and the bishop captures on f4. We have rook to a2, and now uh, finally when the dust settles, c captures on d5 and rook captures on a6, Spassky is down the exchange, but he's up two pawns, so can he make something of the position? Well, uh, there's one way to try, and that is to start pushing the past h pawn. So h5, king to d4, we have h4, h4 and king captures on d5. And unfortunately for Boris, uh, he cannot advance the pawn to h3 because he gets checkmated. Just c6 check, king c7, rook e7 check, and after king to d8, you will play rook captures on f7. Now with ideas of rook to a8 check, followed by rook captures on b8 once the bishop blocks. And after king to c8, still just rook, c rook a8 check bishop to b8 and c7 uh, that's it for black so after this king captures on d5 move uh, rook to b8 was played by spassky and now comes pawn to f6 spectacular finisher by karpov uh, completely opening up uh, the position threatening to capture create a pass pawn rook to e7 is a threat and of course if g captures what was played in the game rook captures on f6 bishop to g3 and now rook captures on f7 with check king to d8 uh, and now just rook to f8 with check. And it was in this position on move 35 that Boris Spassky resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, problem is that if you go to c7, then you just get checkmated. Rook to e7 is checkmate. The pawn covers the b6 square. And if you don't, uh, if you go to, uh, let's say, d7, uh, then just rook to f7 check. King to d8 and rook e4 with some rook to g4, rook to g8 action. And you checkmate the black king all over again. Uh, Spassky is just not in time to advance this pawn uh, two more squares. If he, if the position was different, if he could grab a few more tempi, if this pawn ended up on h2, then, uh, of course, Carpo would have to worry about the pawn a lot more but this way Karpov was just too fast uh, and um, uh, wins the game very nicely so a very very complicated position and here uh, Kar uh, uh, Spassky complicated as much as possible with his bishop to g5 check f4 and queen to f6 move but Karpov find the, found the only uh, winning move in the position and that's all there is that's the story of this game uh, but yeah again when you think about it uh, what really uh, won the game for Karpov was pawn to b4 because this just uh, gives Spassky no more moves. None of Spassky's moves do, do stuff and unless he finds king d7, king to c7 right away, he will not have a, a, a great time. Uh, so yeah, very nicely played by Karpov. Karpov also the, uh, won first place in sole lead, uh, so uh, proving that he is definitely the, 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 the reigning world champion, as this is a game between the former and reigning world champion. And like I said, uh, Karpov had the most wins in the tournament, so it's like he played against Tal, and Tal played like, uh, like Karpov, because out of 11 games, Tal drew like 9 games, won 1 and lost 1. Uh, so yeah, very nice performance, a very nice game by Karpov, and if I hear any more news uh, regarding Karpov, I will inform you guys, but if you if you have any insight on this, do share uh, in, in the comment section. So thank you all, uh, I will see you soon, and have an uh, rest, uh, excellent rest of your day. Uh, I would like to thank Marcus Grabel, James Chambers, Bradley Peterson, Robert Hofsepian, and Bowman Equity for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, well, I already said it, but yeah, I will see you soon. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions um uh, you know and whatever else happens in the chess world and of course uh continuing preparing the steinitz saga for your viewing pleasure uh see you soon guys